maybe shekhar you want to yeah. also talk about you know why not invest in the index right so uh, given what we talked about you know what uh, the strategy definitely needs to have some good alpha yeah uh, the alpha seems to be diminishing so why not invest in the index absolutely that is true so in the nifty 200 universe the diy for the diy investors for doing momentum the alpha is definitely diminishing so it now becomes a choice whether do you want to take this effort and uh, work on it and try to beat the index or why don't you just take the simple route of investing in the uh, indices there are two good indices one nifty 200 momentum 30 there is also one more good index within this universe of nifty 150 momentum 50 index now for these both indices the uh, etfs are available and mutual funds are available we did a very deep dive on the etfs and the mutual funds for the factor uh, based strategies now that is also a very good option the alpha if I, if I assume that over a five-year period or 10-year period, uh, based on the article as published by the uh, capital management analysis, that if you take two and a half or three, uh, 3% or two and a half to three percent roughly in that range, and if you subtract that uh, with the returns, right, then what happens is that only few strategies still stand a chance to beat. And all these strategies like ROC 136, 369, they, uh, they go below the Nifty 200 momentum 30. RAR, and ROC 612. Only these two stand a chance to beat the index. Meaning, see, uh, anyhow, the Nifty 200 Momentum 30 index is a static one. There is no evolvement towards it. These strategies, which are in our control as DIY investors, we have a little bit of alpha, maybe around 1%. Still, we can figure out ways of trying to do the alpha or try to improve the alpha. Some of them, if they have any thoughts on this, any ideas on this, they can definitely do. But if uh, people feel that why do we have to fuss about the one extra 1% and why don't we just index? That's also a very great idea because that leaves, uh, th that is also a rational decision because we are putting into a strategy which we know that is working and is beating the daylights of the DIY investing. So we also believe that and partially we also did invest and start to invest at least in the Nifty 150 mid cap 50 index. That's one uh, thing uh, we want to call out that yes, that is a good index uh, on all different parameters. Nifty 200 momentum 30 also gave a very good uh, competition to it, but we ultimately chose Nifty 150 mid cap 50. Now, having said that, we still believe that there is an alpha in the ROC 612, four weeks and two weeks as a strategy. So still we are continuing to allocate this as a strategy and uh, moving ahead. If you see in the short term time frame, definitely there is much alpha, but if the markets continue to be a uh, flat range for a longer period of time, then we will see the alpha diminishing. But if the uh, uptrend continues, then the alpha might sustain handsomely over Nifty 20 momentum 30. If you see it is 30.22% over the last five years period based on the uh, fact sheet. And if you calculate the point to point returns of the different various strategies, all these strategies beat uh, handsomely in a clear bull run. So that's the uh, whole essence. Uh, the next point that I would like to uh, talk about is the evolution. Let's, as I mentioned, right, if at all we have to move towards a better strategy in future, where do we consider? Or on what lines are we thinking? We are thinking on two lines. One, the universe of Nifty 200 has its advantages as well as disadvantages. The reason for us choosing Nifty 200 is because we have some personal uh, bias towards the larger mid cap. We did try a couple of momentum strategies earlier, even before, uh, long before, long way before, before this. And some of the incidents that have occurred, to us, for example, uh, some of the stocks, let's say if you have a portfolio of 20, 25 stocks, even if a couple of stocks, maybe one or two stocks are in the ASM or trade to trade or in the circuit uh, stock. So exiting those stocks become really difficult. And if one stock starts to be in a continuous lower circuit, then uh, the alpha will be evaporating. And same is the case with, uh, if let's say two or three strategy, two or three different stocks start to be in the uh, in the lower circuit, then whatever uh, alpha that or backtest that we then will go for a toss because the backtests rely that based on the past historical data that you're able to, op on the next opening day, uh, you're able to sell the stock at the closing price. That is the assumption that the backtests take. But if the stock is illiquid and not tradable, then the backtests do not stand in reality. W whatever they preach, uh, those are not exactly translated in the reality. Now, if you want to have a closer resemblance, resemblance, uh, resemblance between the backtested data and the reality, it is better to avoid such junk stocks and uh, solely focus on good stocks. So that's the reason that that bias which we had um, made us to select Nifty 200, the mid cap and large cap stocks. Now that's the past. Uh, coming back to the present right now, we see that Nifty 200 universe has the disadvantage of uh, 
DIY investors have a better option of going with the index. Some alpha is there, but that alpha, that alpha we'll have to see how can we generate. So one direction that we can evolve is by expanding the universe. That's one way. The second way is the there is a solid proven strategy which is called as adaptive momentum strategy, which we are trying to learn about it and try to implement about it. We are making some inroads, but we want to test it out even better and then launch it. As in when we do or come up with this adaptive momentum strategy, we would like to share those insights with you. But I'll share at least two uh, good articles on this, what is happening on adaptive momentum. It basically says that at the top level, you have different assets and each of these assets are, uh, uh, you can think of them as mostly uh, uncorrelated or less correlated and having uh, different uh, varying uh, uh, return profiles. And within these assets, you deploy some kind of a momentum uh, strategy. And on this momentum strategy, again, you do a double click within, a, a, let's say, any particular asset and you select the top 10 stocks within that asset. Maybe you can think of a dual momentum strategy, which you're aware of, which is between uh, Nifty, Gold, and Bonds. If, let's say, the strategy says, now is the time to go long on Nifty, then instead of going on Nifty, we may select the top 10 stocks uh, based on uh, momentum within the Nifty 200 universe or some version of it. So that is the broad lines that we are thinking around. And by uh, by the way, this is a strategy already adopted by a lot of uh, PMSs, especially the pioneers are Capital Mind. Many of you might already be aware of Capital Mind. They have, uh, uh, they have been running a successful PMS on adaptive momentum since 2019, I believe. It's almost six years and they have a very good performance also. You can take a look at uh, the, their performance uh, as well. I'll be sharing all these links. You can learn about the adaptive momentum and uh, the strategy also. The other way that the, the other reason that we're thinking of evolving is because we don't believe that the short term gains will stop here. I'll share this article also that we have been seeing that the government officials, especially in the revenue department, they feel that the center may hike the short term capital gains way above 20%. They also they mentioned the reason, I'll just read it out aloud, that uh, the center may consider increasing the STCG on financial assets beyond 20% in future. Citing a senior government official, I quote, STCG is not an investment. No reason why STCG should be at 20%. It can be higher. The official said, noting that the gains from short-term trading, mostly in mutual funds and equities, cannot be equated with investments. The official further said that STCG does not impact the economy. So if you go with their line of reasoning, they believe that STCG is, or the short-term gains that the investors are getting is purely speculation. So we believe that the 20% STCG is not going to stay at this level and it may increase further. And if it does increase, then what happens is that the uh, strategies which are still standing high like the ROC 612 and the RAR 612 might also go for a toss. And in that case, index becomes the default option, at least in the Nifty 200 universe for anyone doing the uh, DIY momentum investing. Now let's take a look at like, what can be the uh, scenario, as I mentioned, uh, of evolvement, right? Like when I was mentioning that you can go to the Nifty, uh, larger universe of Nifty 500. And if you uh, see some of our older videos, we've also done uh, how different universes impact the momentum returns. Now in that, we have shown a research paper done by Mr. Rajan Raju that Nifty mid small cap 400, that is from the 101st rank to 500th rank, when you sort the Nifty stocks, Nifty 750 stocks based on the market cap from 101 to 500, and they're called as mid small cap 400, they offer the highest uh, returns in terms of momentum. So that is one uh, direction. The second direction is the adaptive momentum strategy that we're thinking on those two legs. Maybe Shekhar, if you can actually, I mean, I think we've talked a lot about uh you know, the comparison, the backtesting results. Uh, can we just conclude on what what are the different things that we've uh, observed overall? Sure, definitely. I think uh, there are five points that are coming out uh, very strongly based on the backtested results. The first one is that in an uptrend, the shorter look back periods give higher returns. So that we have anyhow shown in this, on the fire returns, fire time period, these uh, strategies have outperformed the longer term strategies. So that's the first insight. And by the way, the uh, this five years coincides perfectly with the uptrend that we saw in the last five years. The second point that comes out is uh, over longer period, the longer lookbacks give better returns. Now, over a longer lookback period or longer period, we can safely assume that uh, in the case of 10 years that we have seen a couple of at least one cycle uh, of ups and downs. And in that scenario, we see that the 10-year time frame, we see the opposite of the five-year time frame that uh, the 6 12 and both risk adjusted as, as well as pure absolute rate of change, they too do well compared to the shorter term look back periods. So that is the second insight that we have. Now, the third insight is that uh, irrespective of the strategy, the drawdowns are the same everywhere. Uh, they are in the, range, in the range of 30 to 34 percent. And there is no escaping uh, the drawdowns irrespective of the strategy that we choose. The fourth insight is uh, 
the 6 to 12 month look back has the least number of transactions across the time frame. You see that over time period of five years, we have 635 and 519 for two week and four week respectively, which is much lower than the numbers as you see in the 136 and similar to what we see in RAR. In fact, in RAR, it even beats the uh, four week uh, strategy. And even in a longer time, uh, longer time frame, uh, we see the number to be around 1053 for ROC 612 four week. And this is the least uh, except for RAR 612 two week. And uh, ROC 136 has a very high churn, even the 369 uh, strategies also. The next insight is uh, alpha over Nifty 200 momentum 30 is present only in a couple of strategies. That is right now at this point, the longer term strategies. And we see that it is diminishing and it will diminish further if the LTCG and STCG are uh, hiked even further. So that's the uh, main takeaways. And one, one more small takeaway that we also want to uh, give is the alpha is still present, by the way, if the uptrend continues. And if in the uptrend, we see that there's clear alpha over the Nifty Tone Momentum 30. But over a longer time period, if the market again normalizes or stabilizes, then that might be diminished. So to sum up, these are the five uh, different insights that we have. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shekhar. Uh, I'm hoping that these insights will definitely help our viewers. I think many of them have been asking about sharing the backtesting results, and here we go. Um, in the future as well, I think as we will be testing more and more strategies, uh, um, like we've also talked about adaptive momentum strategy. So once we uh, get the backtesting results for that, uh, we'll come back with more such insights. Right. Uh, yeah, with that, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.